Hi guys, it's Barnaby here for Spurred On. I'm with Craig Mitch. Of course I am. How are yes, you, Craig? I'm good. How are you? Very good. This is episode one of Spurverts this week. And what more is there to be perverted about than Tottenham Hotspur 4, yes. Manchester City yes. 1. Yes. You were at the game? Yes, we was. Both of us was at we the were. game. And um, it was amazing. It was actually... A, you, you had to be at the game just to understand the atmosphere. I feel like that 12th man yeah. really helped us kind of hammer them. We maybe have got the win because we were playing quite well, but to really go and get the extra goals and have that mom momentum, sorry, the fans played a huge role in it. No, it was incredible. And the only match that comes close to that in terms of recent memory for me, uh, in terms of how the, the ground was bouncing and the fans were rocking, was the uh, Tottenham 5 Chelsea 3 game yes, on yes. New Year's Day. It was amazing. It was brilliant to be there. Guys, let us know uh, in the comment section below where you were watching the game and, and how you experienced it. We'd really like to hear, wouldn't we? Yes. I mean, just tell us in the comments below because honestly, like, we're kind of lost for words still. We're, I'm having to pinch myself yeah. that we actually beat Man City 4-1. Yeah. Like, they always muller us and then we turned it around. Amazing. Yeah, and we just played them off the park. Like, it wasn't as mm. simple as, you know, I mean, they will blame their injuries and they'll blame, like, the offside course. goals. But oh, of course. If, if there were no offside goals in that game, it would have been 2-0 to Spurs. So. Exactly, if you want to use that logic. We just outplayed them. Uh, Dyer and Lamelo were just phenomenal. And that's a good point uh, about Lamelo. We've given him enough stick on this show that we should let him have his moment in the sun. Yeah. He was man of the match, without doubt. Oh, without a doubt. The guy was phenomenal. And uh, for the first time, he really looked like he was worth 27 million. Yeah. Like, he just put in, he worked his socks off. He and was 30 making million, which is actually what we paid. Oh, is it 30 million? Yeah, 27 I was, probably was Soldado, down, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, okay, so even better. He looked like he was worth 30 million. I mean, he put in tackles, he was putting in good balls. He looked hungry and he even got a goal for all of his troubles. So, yeah. yeah. I, I really noticed that basically in the first 15, 20 minutes he was putting it about and uh, a couple of tackles that he made near the sidelines and the crowd just went crazy for it he and did. just like, you know, put it, when he puts it in, then I think that gives him the confidence to then try uh, to do it easier. Whereas yeah. usually he's, he feels like, oh, I've got to prove myself, I've got to do a clever trick or whatever. Whereas, you know, remember a couple of those one-twos he played with Ericsson that, yeah. that, that opened himself out and got him space and he won that free kick that um, Ericsson then hit against Exactly. I mean, the guy was just putting in a shift and when he came off the field, the, the standing ovation he got was just incredible. I know it really touched him. Lamella, it's okay, you can shed a tear, lad. Yeah, thoroughly deserved and also Bobby Soldado gave him a good tweet, didn't he? Did he uh, see that? He did, yeah, he did. But move on, Soldado, you know, we just go away. Come on, we love Bobby. No, we want him to why? Do well. What? I just, do you know what? I might be, you, you guys are going to look at me as the villain, okay? But it's as simple as this. The guy did not put in the performances and we are not going to waste any more spurred on minutes but on this But he tried. Man. He was a trier. We like a trier at Spurs. It's this a shame a it didn't work out business. for him. Anyway, you are the villain. So let's move on. <laughs> uh, on Monday Night Football this week, Gary Neville, the scourge of Spurs a lot yeah. of the time, actually talked up what Mopo has been doing and saying that he's moved on the mm. Deadwood and he's actually brought in players who are now changing the culture at Spurs. What do you think of that? I mean, first of all, I'm a big Gary Neville fan, not for his time at Man United, just because I think he's a really good pundit. Yeah, he's... He really, he was really, really good on Sky Sports. But he has been slating Tottenham over the last year, saying that, you know, we're pretenders and we're not really good and we miss something and, and it's just, it, it's normal for the big teams to kind of beat Spurs. So for you to just do a complete 180 now after we beat Man City, come on, like, be consistent in your opinion, Gary Neville. That's my opinion. I do respect his opinion, but at the same time, have some consistency, mate. I... Uh... I know what you're saying, but He's I think on the wagon we I know what Man you're City. saying, but I think you know football changes so quickly, especially the Premier League, that sometimes and look, I know it more than most because I'm so bad at fantasy football. Sometimes yeah. a player who I think is going to be brilliant, score loads of goals doesn't and I just proven to be rubbish and I have to admit that I'm wrong and maybe he's just admitting that you know Spurs are proving him wrong. Yeah but the thing is we was already a better team last season anyway on the Poch than we was under AVB. We really put in performances. We only finished six points off the top four and he didn't really talk up Poch's um, influence over the team last season and now we get one big win against Man City and it's like well now I'm just gonna you know jump on board. What about when we beat Palace? What about when we beat Sunderland? Oh were they small teams Gary Neville? Are they not big enough for you? Huh? What about when we lost to Manchester United? Oh, Trafford. You didn't have anything good to say about us then, even though we scored an own goal. Did you, Gary Neville? But now, now that we beat Man City, the team you hate, you know, Manchester's rivals, oh, miraculously, Spurs are a great team. Well, you know what? You can keep it. You can shove up your ass, Gary Neville. I'll listen to Philip. Philip, now coach of Valencia, of course, so you'll have to listen to him. Yeah, I'll listen to Philip. Can you speak Spanish? That's the thing. Si, si, senor. Okay, fair enough. Uh, actually, just one point you brought up uh, that is interesting that I want to bring up is um, if you actually take all the games 
uh, from last year that we played against the teams we played this year. We're actually about three, two or three points ahead of where we were last year. So it's, you know, we're it's, good really, it's good we're times really over well. at Spurs. What can we say? Uh, anyway, so that was part one of Spurberts. Let us know if you agree with Craig's rant in the comments section below. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. But also check into part two where Craig will be talking a bit about Jamie Redknapp, an oh. ex-Spur. And of course, our boy Harry Kane and the Frenchman Clinton and G. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV and see us in part two. How's it going, guys? Welcome to part two of Spurberts. And it is still me, Craig Mitch, and Slats over here. <laughs> and today we are going to be talking about Jamie Redknapp.